For me, I get asked, what's my identity? Being a college professor, working in the cattle industry, designing equipment. Autism is an important part of who I am. I wouldn't want to change it because I don't like the illogical way that most people think. But it's not my primary identity. I looked really terrible when I was two years old. Kids can look really bad. Then as you work with them, some kind of pull out of it, others don't. But you don't know until you start to work with them. And that's why early intervention is so important. And what I'm seeing as I travel around the country is we're doing a better job on the early intervention, but where we're really falling down is with the older kids, teaching job skills, driving. That's gonna take longer because of the multitasking issue. I did 200 miles on dirt roads at my aunt's ranch picking up the mail every day, which was three miles away, before I did traffic. A lot more practice in really safe places. When I was four years old, I was nonverbal, had all the symptoms of severe autism. I was uh, fortunate to get into a really good early intervention program. Lots of turn-taking games, teaching me language, teaching table manners. That was done in a much more structured way back in the 50s that I want to demonstrate is how you walk back by them to get them to come up in the chute. If you've got three-year-olds that are not talking, the worst thing you can do is just to wait. You got to start working with that kid now. I've seen too many situations where the diagnosis is holding fully verbal kids back because there's a tendency to baby them and they're not learning how to drive, they're not learning working skills. And very often today, I have grandparents come up to me and they discover they're on the autism spectrum when the kids get diagnosed. But those grandparents had decent jobs because they had paper routes at age 11, learned how to work. Social skills in, our, in my generation were taught in a much more structured way. In the 50s, we had sit-down meals. You were taught how to take turns in conversation. And that's one of the reasons why a lot of the older generation had jobs and kept their jobs. You see, a brain can be more thinking or brain can be more social emotional. And a certain amount of this is just uh, normal variation. And years ago I said, who do you think made the first stone spear back in the caveman days? It wasn't the yakety yaks around the campfire. It would have been somebody probably on the autism spectrum in the back of the cave trying to chip that rock and tie it to a stick. What you gotta do with kids on the spectrum is stretch them. Stretch them just outside the comfort zone, but give them choices. Now, the way I got into the cattle industry is I was exposed to it when I was a teenager. I came from a non-ag background. And when the opportunity came up to visit my aunt's ranch, mother gave me a choice. I could go for a week and come home if I hated it, or stay all summer. Not going wasn't one of the choices. But giving some choices of stretching activities. The other thing we cannot let these kids do is become recluses in their room. They get so anxious, they just don't want to come out of their room. Exercise will help on that. I do 100 sit-ups every night, but you've got to get them out doing things. And I've had parents say, oh, he got a job at a store and he's just blossoming. You see, a person on the spectrum has lots of memory. So let's compare to computer systems. So you got the cloud computing memory back here. Tons and tons of memory, but a really small chip. Working memory is a problem. And so anything that requires remembering a sequence of steps, like maybe uh, doing the ice cream machine at McDonald's, pilot's checklist. And when I worked in a dairy when I was a graduate student, they had a checklist on the wall on how to set up the dairy equipment, the milking machine equipment, and I would have been in a lot of trouble without that checklist. That's a real easy thing to do. Let's look at situations in the environment that can cause problems with people with autism, and that's lighting. Certain kinds of lighting flickers. I was just in a hotel room the other day that was completely horrible. It had chevron black and white stripes on the floor and compact fluorescent lights. And I could see the, the pattern on the floor going like this. Now, I tolerated it okay, but there are certain people where this would be completely awful. I have some sound sensitivity problems. One of the ways to help get over sound sensitivity is let the kid control it. All right, let's say he's afraid of the vacuum cleaner. Then let the kid turn it on and off. Let the kid control that vacuum cleaner where they are controlling that sound. 
and then they can sometimes learn to tolerate it if they control it. I get asked all the time, should I tell the kid they have autism? He's having a great time. I wouldn't bother telling them. And I'm seeing too many kids where their whole identity is autism. And they say, oh, I want to be an autism activist. And I explain to them, you will be a better activist if you can go out and excel in a job, maybe an engineering job, an art job, writing job, or something like that. And then you do the activist stuff. I always emphasize all the things I've done at work. And what I learned is I learned to sell my work. People thought I was weird. But when I showed them my drawings and my pictures, they looked at that and go, oh, you designed that? People on the spectrum usually are good at one thing, bad at something else. We need to be putting a lot more emphasis on building up the area of strength. Talking to the um, FFA and the 4-H students today just about some basic things about animal behavior. And one of the things I learned from animals was learning how to work. I was not a good student in high school, but I learned how to work in my school's horse barn. Big problem I'm seeing today is not learning work skills. Because I'm afraid that some of those kids today are just ending up getting addicted to video games, and they're not going anywhere. They're not becoming video game designers. If they were becoming great video game designers, I wouldn't be criticizing it. But that's not where they're going. And I'm seeing a really big problem on not learning working skills. How about walking dogs? How about church volunteer jobs? Find things in the neighborhood that the kid can do that's on a schedule outside the family. I was bullied in high school. I got bullied in school. It was awful. Fortunately, I was not bullied uh, in elementary school. Because Mrs. Deach, the third grade teacher, explained that I had a disability, but it wasn't a disability you could see, like having a wheelchair or crutches, and the other kids ought to be helping me. So high school was a disaster, a complete disaster of bullying. In elementary school, other kids like to do craft projects. So I had friends who shared interests. It's a really important thing, friends who shared interest. Then when I was in high school and I was still getting bullied, the only places I was not bullied was horseback riding, model rockets, and electronics. That's Again, that is shared interests. Really important like to get kids maybe involved in band, the school play. It could be lots of different things. Being a woman in the feed yard industry was much harder than being autistic, way harder. Well, I don't do the bar scene. That's too socially complicated for me. Also, I can't hear. I've got some auditory processing problems and with background noise, I can't hear. You know, I think what makes my life um, interesting and worthwhile is work. Also, if you quickly walk back by them like that, they'll go forward. I was very happy to have a lady come up to me in, in the airport last night and tell me that she'd read my books and looked at some of my videos and that it really helped her daughter. That's something that, that gives meaning to life. This program is part of the Move to Include initiative, made possible with support from the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, a private corporation funded by the American people. The Max and Helen Guernsey Charitable Foundation in support of educational programming on statewide Iowa Public Television.